Hello sensitive viewers and welcome to Animal World, our co-inhabitants. On today's programme, we present the first of a three-part series featuring Sonia Fitzpatrick, one of the most widely recognised and respected telepathic animal communicators in the world. She has worked with clients from around the globe, including Hollywood actress Tori Spelling and vegan talk show host and actress Ellen DeGeneres, and is the author of several popular books, including What the Animals Tell Me and Cat Talk, The Secret of Communicating with Your Cat. Ms. Fitzpatrick also hosts a weekly call-in radio show called Animal Intuition on Sirius Satellite Radio and previously hosted a series on the television channel Animal Planet called The Pet Psychic. The UK-born Miss Fitzpatrick currently lives in Texas, USA with five dog and 12 cat companions as well as a family of frogs. She now shares how she first came to realize that she has the ability to communicate telepathically with animals. I was born with a severe hearing loss and so therefore I didn't speak sort of verbal language until I was four and a half. And so therefore I could hear the animals speaking. As a little girl, I, I thought everybody could do what I could do. So I used to talk telepathically to the animals and um, and the, they would speak back to me, which I was born with a gift. Sonia Fitzpatrick's father was a butcher. He also raised livestock on his farm and slaughtered them for meat. This was a source of immense suffering for young Sonia. He used to walk with the family doctor up the garden. The pigs would be in the field, the chickens were in the field. He would take um, the doctor up and say, do you want the leg off that one for Christmas? And I used to say to him, the pig knows what you're saying. And he used to say, oh, your imagination is so vivid. Right. And I could feel the pain and the anxiety of the animal when I was three, four years old. While she was still a young girl, an extremely painful event caused Sonia Fitzpatrick to stop communicating with the animals. It all began with three goose eggs. Why I stopped talking to animals was because my three geese, who I'd raised from eggs, at that time you put them in the incubator, and my father said, you can have these three geese. And then as they grew up, they followed me everywhere. They would always come with me to school, leave me at the school gate. Then at lunchtime, we used to go home for lunch. And um, they would always be waiting for me outside. And they would know what time to come. And people used to think, it's very strange that those geese know what time yeah. Sonny is getting out of school. And they'd be waiting for me. They'd walk home with me. And then Christmas came, of course, and um, I had this awful feeling all morning and um, I was coming back from my friend's farm and I just had this horrible feeling that something had happened. I didn't know what it was. Yes. So I walked through and my geese weren't there. They weren't in the field and they always would come and meet me. And when I got home, of course, I went to look for them and I ran into the barn and they were all hanging up by their feet, dead. And that was so traumatic for me as a little girl because I really loved them. And I went in for lunch and there was my goose on the dining room table, one of them. After that, I think the only way I could survive was by not talking to animals ever again in that very special way, which I could talk to them, it's too painful. So that's when I started. It was many years later that Miss Fitzpatrick began to talk telepathically to the animals once again. She had a moving experience which confirmed that her life's mission is to communicate with animals. 
it's when about. When we teaching and, etiquette, my daughter and I, we were in the studio and I sat down one day and I thought, I'm not really happy doing this. And uh, suddenly I was sitting there drinking my tea and I looked over on the wall and this beautiful like shape came, beautiful light. And it was the whole shape of an angel. And then telepathically I heard the angel saying, you'll be working with animals and doing God's work. Then it, my, my career really started to take off. And before I knew it, I had a TV show. How exactly do animals communicate? So they talk in pictures, feelings, emotions and senses. So they get pictures from us, but because we have the faculty of speech, we don't think about what else is happening, but there's a lot of things happening in our energy. And um, the animals see them, feel them, they feel everything we're sensing. When I'm talking to an animal or I tune into an animal, I immediately start to feel and sense it. I get a feeling of love or, or they're disturbed or there have been times when they've been happy and the language is so fast, telepathic language, boom, 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 like that. And that's why I'm so quick. People say, you're so quick, how do you do it? Because the animals, boom, boom, boom. I can feel it, sense it. I use every part of my body. And when I talk to an animal, I become the animal. I become the cat. And I laughed yesterday because I had a client and the dog said to me, are you a dog? And I said, yes, right now I am, but I'm also a human. And he thought that was very funny. And he started to laugh and I could hear his sweet laugh. <laughs> Meditation plays an important role in Sonia Fitzpatrick's life, helping her to better communicate with the animals. I meditate because I clear my mind, you know, and often I will, you know, meditate and I feel that lovely peaceful feeling. You go to a higher level of consciousness mm -hmm. and that feeling is always there. It's an incredible feeling whenever I have that experience. I know that I use the right side of my brain when I'm talking to the animals. I switch the side when I'm talking to them. You know, on my practical side, uh, where everyday things are happening, uh, my brain is, is like um, working like everybody else's. But when I talk to animals, it's very different. And um, I feel and sense it. And I feel the animal's energy. And talking, it, it's different than talking verbally. Through her communications with animals and other beings, Ms. Fitzpatrick has gained a deeper understanding about how our world and the universe operate. She believes that we must respect everything here on Earth. Everything serves a purpose in the universe. And now it's out of balance, cutting trees down that we you know that people have no respect and don't understand trees, that they have consciousness, that they help us breathe, you know, and um, people just don't think about that. It doesn't occur to them, cut a tree down, nothing more. Let's cut it down, it's in the way, so let's take it down without really understanding. When you cut a tree down, the squirrels live in the tree, the raccoons live in trees, the possums go in trees. The birds make nests in trees, so you're immediately taking their home away from them. And the animals, have now, as we can see constantly, we see deer walking around the estates, you know, because their habitat is being taken from them. So the animals are in dire straits. Miss Fitzpatrick helps many clients deal with their grief and anxiety when one of their animal companions passes over. There's no death, and so many people come to me because they want to talk about their animals that have passed over. But the great thing is that um, it's just the physical body that dies. There's no death as far as, you know, the spirit and the soul is concerned. Exactly. And we just go on and we go back home. And you know, you're at peace and there's just love and peace. And I have that incredible feeling of consciousness when I go into that spiritual realm because we're much more than a physical body. And my energy body goes in and out, in and out all the time. So when I'm over the other side, as, oh, oh I, I feel I have one foot in the spirit world and one foot in the physical world. And the animal will come through 
he's with he's around and with the person anyway and often people will say I can't tell you how much better that's made me feel because yes. they don't know where their animal is they don't know where it's gone um, they don't know our appreciation Miss Fitzpatrick for your fascinating insights on the animal kingdom and mother nature you are truly helping bring animals and humans closer together in spirit and love. For more information on Sonia Fitzpatrick, please visit www.soniafitzpatrick.com or follow her on www.facebook.com. Books by Miss Fitzpatrick are available at www.amazon.com. Why might our animal companion suddenly display an inappropriate behaviour? To find out, please join us again tomorrow on Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants, as we present part two of a three-part series featuring the perceptive Miss Sonia Fitzpatrick. Thank you, cordial viewers, for your company today on our programme. May all caregivers and their animal companions share many happy moments together. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AW.